Welcome to the episode number 23 of the Growth Arctic podcast. Today, we're going to talk about growth KPIs and how to measure them in analytics or your fucking white boy. Yeah. So why do we want to talk about uh, growth KPIs, Hendrik? Maybe... Yeah, I don't know. I always ask you why we talk about and that. And I always ask because you came up with this topic. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody knows data are important. Yeah. Um, and, and translation of growth marketing is something like, da uh, something like data-driven data marketing. Absolutely. And that's the yeah. reason why, uh, why we think it's important to talk about this, where to start. Um, KPIs, which KPIs, what KPIs yeah. are you measuring for your business? Maybe yeah. that's a good starting point, And right? the KPIs you should measure for, yeah. for, for your individual businesses, yeah. what we are tracking, why we are tracking them, with what are we tracking it, yeah, yeah tools-wise. Yeah. And yeah, let's dig into that, yeah? yeah. So um, I've got a meetup coming up that's called A Pirate's Guide to Analytics on November 7th, yeah? Mm -hmm. This episode will be published on October 29th. So you will still have a chance to check this out. We always have it as a live stream on Facebook and you can register for that. Mm -hmm. So why, why is this so important to me? So I, I started performance marketing probably around like seven, eight years ago. And in the e-commerce world, being, being really strict about tracking your KPIs, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's a given. Like you put in a euro in at AdWords and you want to know exactly how much to get out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the more complex business models where you have a long lead time, you're not selling a widget. Uh, it's important for me to measure every step that actually leads to the final sale. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. the first thing I want to measure is the milestones the users go through, yeah, the funnel mm -hmm. metrics. So could you maybe share an example of such a funnel? Yeah, I would start at the, with the first KPI with the, at the bottom of the funnel, not at the top, at the bottom. We, yeah. we have an episode already about revenue. Yeah. We we'll start in the end. For instance, for e-commerce, there it's e very easy to track. It's revenue. Revenue. That's, in K that's a KPI, revenue yeah. in time, yeah. per month, per half year, per, per year, something like this, right? Yeah, or maybe even one step deeper, customer yeah. lifetime value. That's, yeah, yeah. that's deeper. That that's is right. one level deeper because you have like one-time revenue, that's what we would count on a monthly basis, for example, but you would consider, oh yeah, but how much is this customer worth over the life cycle time of their customer? Yeah. And life cycle time means recurring yeah. customers. Right? How long does he stay with you? Does he stay with you for three months, for six months, for six years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How okay. would you measure it for an e-commerce business? So e because they have they don't have in mm -hmm. normal ways in, in subscription business. E-commerce yeah. is like an online store selling uh, sneakers. Yeah. So there are two ways. Most shops like Shopify and WooCommerce, they start to provide you, they know the customer ID when they log in, mm -hmm. when they bought something, they sign up. If they didn't sign up, they don't know, of course, yeah. And they will show you the customer lifetime value if we have a business that has repeat customers. And uh, the other way, I usually do it through analytics tools mm -hmm. like Google Analytics or Mixpanel, or even now, which I really love, MailChimp does it. Mm -hmm. They start doing it, right? Yeah, and they do it in a beautiful way. I did you, test it. You, you can synchronize your purchases with your, um, with your mailing list, and they don't even need to be on your mailing list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will put them up on MailChimp, but you cannot email them. Mm -hmm. But every buyer will be there. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And you can see exactly with product pictures what they bought when and what the average customer lifetime value is. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. Yeah, with... Right. With apps, you can also see it, uh, for example, in the Google Play Store, you see average revenue per paying user, which is very similar to yeah. customer lifetime value. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. So that's the way I would track it. Do you have any additions to that? I think so. <laughs> so my basic thing is Google Analytics, where I can see, okay, from this channel, 
Ah, yeah. that's a different thing. It's not per user. It's I always make this channel tracking thing, but maybe one step yeah. up in the funnel. Yeah. So, but that is an important point to differentiate yeah. customer lifetime value also by where the people come from. Yeah. yeah? And and this leads us to the to the one step above mm -hmm. the revenue and the customer lifetime value, like the the engagement with you. Yeah. yeah. Then it very much depends on your business model, like. We have a business model where it's a lot get people into an email newsletter, for mm -hmm. example, and then sell them something. Yeah. Yeah. So subscriber at the top of this thing, then how many people open, how many people engaged, how often do they engage? Do they download your shizzle? Do they unsubscribe? Exactly. There is a there's a, a thing um, that is uh, called a lead score um, mm -hmm. that we get in there, like for example, you can assign a value to somebody who subscribed versus somebody who just visited your website. That's called a, a hundred points uh, you can give and a hundred points is definitely a buyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if somebody subscribed, maybe he gets five points, he downloads an ebook, 10 points, downloads another one, 10 points. And at some value, they are maybe qualified enough to get a sales call mm -hmm. yeah, from mm -hmm. somebody. But if you do that before that, you maybe waste the time of mm -hmm. the salespeople, yeah? Mm -hmm. So how many people get into the engaged phase is another big KPI for me, mm -hmm. yeah? Should we make an example? Yeah, do you, do you have uh, one in mind or maybe, shall I maybe, maybe share the Klarheit example? Maybe, or we are just an e-commerce, I would say we take an e-commerce example, e -commerce example for maybe one month in yeah. August, for example. Yeah. Say, okay, what's, what's the way until yeah. the revenue or the customer lifetime. So let me take the, the client example. It's a physical book, a physical yeah. calendar you can buy from Amazon or from a Shopify store that is also linked with MailStream and everything. <clears throat> and uh, I used to give away this book for free as PDF. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In exchange for an email address. Mm -hmm. then That's they a lead. Then yes, that is a lead. Yeah. So you have traffic from a certain source they sign up for a certain price for me that was one euro yeah mm -hmm. and then a certain percentage like they get emails or so every week they get one email and it depends on how many people open that and engage with the content um how many people buy from that email list mm -hmm. so in a given month uh, we had 4,000 subscribers to this email list. So we invested 4,000 euros to generate subscribers from Facebook, for example. They got the emails and 25% bought this. Yeah, so... Well, that's amazing, right? I, I invest one euro to do when generate a subscriber. Yes, that was, that was really good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and after five euros investing into leads, I had one purchase, mm -hmm. yeah, but still four people on the list uh, that are per potential later purchases. Mm -hmm. So we could easily spend ton, 10 euros on cost per acquisition. So I, we only used half of that and we got the email list that, that was growing. And mm -hmm. then later had the opportunity to also buy additional products from Klarheit, like booking a workshop, booking a, a, a poster calendar for the wall and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That is an example from Facebook where we generate traffic to engage subscribers of an email list to a purchase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So what would your, so if I think about my business, just we take one channel, I'm buying AdWords. Yeah. So for my coaching business, for just one or two really special keywords, I'm paying for this, I would say, 150 to 200 euros a month. Yeah. And I don't do the calculation because I just see what's coming in. Yeah. I would say I get for cost per click is something like 1.80 euros. So 1 euro 80. Really? That's expensive. Yeah, but yeah. Depends. Okay. It depends. Exactly. Depends. 1 euro 80. Yeah. So that means for 180, well, let's make it easier. Compared to LinkedIn, it's yeah. super cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So they come in, maybe 100 um, leads coming in or clicks coming to my landing page from these 100 up to, I would say, 25% are downloading my, my slides. Yeah. So they're coming into to my HubSpot. And from this 25, I would say three or four or then I'm doing my manual lead scoring yeah. process. 
three to four are people where I know, okay, they are really into my target group. I want to sell a corporate workshop now. Yeah. And it's... That's good. That's really good, but it's not... But the calculate it in detail like I would do it for an e-commerce business. Yeah. It's more or less. So you have 25 leads from 150 euros? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Leads, then, email addresses, email downloaded or, something. That, that, yeah, exactly. And but that's good. That's I, really would, good. I would say mm -hmm. it's good, but I want to make the difference yeah. to, to an e-commerce business where you do the math all the day yeah. and always seeing here and here and here. I just make a test one year ago for this AdWords stuff yeah. to find is there something what is a, a, do I get traffic with this keyword? First yeah. point. Second point, what about my landing page? What, what do I have to yeah. offer for this kind of target group to, to get the lead in? Yeah. Second one. Third one, the leads I get. What about the leads? Are this quality leads? Are this students just uh, working on uh, growth hacking stuff? Um, sorry, I love you, but nothing to sell yeah. <laughs> and so on and so on. So that's, that's where I start always with trying or, or find a way how to, to track if a channel is working for you or not. Yeah. And everybody says, well, 1.80, 1, 1. so 1 euro 80 is really expensive. We always say. But it's only 8 euro in your case per lead who yeah. signs up. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, so it, it every, sounds expensive. Every fourth to fifth person on your website on the landing page of the yeah. ad um, downloads the PDF yeah yeah so why don't you spend 1500 yeah that's so that would be my question now okay now I, I can um, do two things I could uh, increase the number of budget uh, increase the budget yes. to, to, to see if there is more what I did is I, um, I'm trying out new countries, so new yeah. target groups. Do this, is this same system working for Austria, for Switzerland? I can explain you. Yes. Yeah, it, it works. Work. Mm -hmm. It works. Cool. But what about France? What about, uh, yeah. what about Netherlands and so on? So th that's my way I, I, I try to extend this kind of system. But I think you maybe, you would see if, if you can get it cheaper, right? Mm, mm, yes, I would look for. <laughs> I, I, actually, I I don't give a fuck about cheap. I care very much about maximizing profit and yeah. profit yeah. margin. Yeah. yeah. So I I'm absolutely willing to spend six euros on a LinkedIn click if yeah. I if I make sixty euros of profit for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problems with that whatsoever. But I need to find the funnel that actually does it, and this is why I need I need the growth KPIs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to know what happens. So in your case, that, that is what your case is pretty, uh, pretty good because I see that a lot of times. People do not care about tracking their growth KPIs diligently and they either underspend or overspend. Right. Either they don't see any results um, and they're just spending money. Yeah, yeah, we are building our brand. No, fuck it's you. It's for brand awareness. Yeah. Yeah, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, like like just grow followers. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> it's the same. I want to say it's like increasing followers. <laughs> <laughs> the last episode uh, was about that, so you hear our opinion on does it matter to increase your followers? Yeah, uh, yes, it does. It does, and it does. No, it does. <laughs> so they they overspend, but the the more tragic case I see is people underspending. I look into their data and I clearly see dudes putting in one buck and they make yeah. 20. And I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and why do you even haggle with your junior marketer that he cannot spend more than a thousand euros per month? Yeah. Uh, you are leaving real scalable money on the table. And I do this whole growth KPI shit and the analytics tool like Google Analytics and Facebook Analytics and Mixed Panel and Segment. For only for this reason, to, to find the right speed of growth for this business. A very natural speed of growth that they can grow with also like operationally. But most people just, they don't know, they just have their hands on their eyes and um, yeah. are thinking like, yeah, it, it, it kind of works. No, no, no. How awesome could it work? 
mm-hmm. yeah, is, is to me the, the, the question that leads me to the necessity of doing growth at KPIs. And if you don't have fancy analytic systems, it's not necessary. Do it in a spreadsheet. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How much are you spending? How many more followers did you get? How many more leads did you have this week? How much a revenue did you generate out of those leads that you uh, that you generated that week? Very, very, very simple. But just do it in order to get quicker to, to the learning process. Yeah. yeah? So um, do we do we want to talk about like what we use tracking with? Yeah. I, I, yes. If you I think it's a good um, a good introduction to, to to this what thing is because we have so many tools. There's Google Analytics. There's uh, Facebook, s- Facebook, HubSpot. There's HubSpot. Yeah. There's Mailchimp. There's Segment.com. There's Intercom, and so on and so on. But in the end, if we are doing all our marketing on different channels, my question always is, where where is the baseline? And you do it in a in a spreadsheet to 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 bring it together to see in the end of the month. Okay, this was a month where our sum up. With four thousand users, with yeah. uh, a thousand leads, with two hundred fifty customers paying, I use or a, what do you, what do you a do? Google Doc or yeah. a Google Data Studio? Yeah. Okay. But again, I use the Google Doc as the data provider for the fancy graphs in Google Data Studio. But um, the the all in one thing. We usually hate people who who do this who just put in all the channels and look at it. But at some point you need to. Yeah. Yeah. At some point you need to. I, how much I am I putting yes. in, and how much profit am I generating yeah. out of that? In the end. In yes, exactly. You you can like subtract like some weird experimental channels. That's okay if you set the budget aside. But uh, before we go to the to the what, I heard something that really piqued my interest. In. I heard that Red Bull is spending thirty percent of their revenue on marketing. Mm-hmm. And I think if I would even spend 10%, I would be so much farther ahead. Yeah. If I would be stand, spending like 1,000. Yeah, oh, I never heard about and, this and, KPI and before. I, when, when I heard this about Red Bull, I, I was thinking that explains a lot about yeah. Red Bull, right? And the, mm-hmm. how reasonable is this to spend 30% of your revenue on mm-hmm. Customer acquisition, mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe you can't afford thirty uh, percent yet. Maybe you start with five. But they are doing not in not only customer acquisition. They are a good example for doing a lot of stuff in brand awareness and so on and so on. And it pays off. Like yeah, a it pays off in the end. Yeah. yeah. For them, it pays off. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, ha- have you thought about? No, I didn't. This? But I think it uh, it, fits. it sounds so reasonable. Yeah, right? it, yeah, it, yeah, it is. And it fits exactly in my last weeks. We had a session about the, uh, an episode. I have no idea which episode it was. Where the your revenue one? Uh, maybe. Or which one? I think it was bef- yeah. time-wise it was before. But where I said, okay, I started sp- in my first year. I had to survive. And now I, I have the feeling that I yeah. start investing, reinvesting something to grow. That's maybe for the last two yeah. and three months the case. And start experimenting with PPC, PPC channels, and yeah. not to think about 50 euros, to think about maybe 500 euros, but yeah. to, to 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 make experiments, what you can get. And if I would make a percentage calculation, I, I would guess it's just guess. I, I would say it's up to 10, 15 yeah. percent in the last two three months. And before, I would say it was maybe one percent. Yeah. And if you were to grow, if a guy yeah. like Neil Patel was listening, he would be like, are you fucking shitting me? You have to spend like 80% yeah. of your revenue back into customer acquisition costs. Um, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. Yeah, but still, uh, I, I mm. very much appreciate the, the mentality behind that. And um, I'm currently maybe investing like 5%, maybe 1,000 1, per month back um, back into the business. And since that, since I do that consistently, maybe the last three to four uh, months, I, I feel that so many more people that I would not have like the mm-hmm. immediate contact with are, are now reached by mm-hmm. me, are now impacted by the message you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and to, to have this KPI um, that feeds your growth KPIs. And it doesn't need to be paid advertising. You can hire somebody to do your consistent social media marketing, for example, to develop content for you, to, to, yeah. to invest the money in the designer so that your presentations don't look like shit. Yeah? This is all within mm -hmm. that budget, I think. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and to do that more consistently is something I, I do. That's a good one. Okay. So mm -hmm. let, let's turn to the question of like, what, uh, what do we use to yeah. do? We, we mentioned the, the usual suspects. Yeah. So the focus of the meetup on the 7th of November will be Google Analytics and Facebook Analytics. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are the big elephants in the room. Uh, what, do you, what do you measure <laughs> with Facebook Analytics, for instance? Everything that Google Analytics measures as well, mm -hmm. plus uh, extras. For example, Facebook is incredibly good as, at measuring customer lifetime value mm -hmm. because they, they do not think in sessions. They think in people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the biggest difference between Google Analytics and Facebook. But if, if I collect somebody via Facebook and maybe he, he or she orders a, a bootcamp ticket via Facebook, yeah. okay, everything is in Facebook. But if I sell after doing a bootcamp to this person who's working in a marketing yeah. department of a big corporate and they are buying a corporate workshop. With invoice. With, with invoice. That is harder to track, but still you can just upload that as an offline event done. Yeah? But I know, but I would never do this because why? The, the, the question is when That's interesting. will, what do you use for billing? Uh, fast bill. Yeah. When will Fastbill automatically integrate with that? Or could you just simply set up a, a Google Doc that, that puts that data in a spreadsheet whenever you set uh, up the bill? Sure, blog? I could build it with Zapier or whatever, but... Yeah. but that is more of the e-commerce case. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, you don't need to measure the final, final, final conversion. Mm -hmm. You need to measure all the lead metrics that highly correlate to that final thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So... Those are my two mm -hmm. most important mm -hmm. measuring tools. And Facebook recently, just like last week, announced this huge change that they now splitting mm -hmm. the analytics from the advertising. Yeah. yeah. That makes it like in the GDPR world that mm -hmm. we live in, makes it much easier to say, okay, I'm using Facebook Pixel just like I use Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not using it for retargeting. I just want to know what, what happens on my yeah. page. Yeah. And I can still see the conversion results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just not the retargeting part yeah. uh, that that has it in there. And then let's go to your example. You use HubSpot. I'm, I'm more like a, a guy. I, I stitch everything together, and you have this HubSpot solution. So, yeah. what KPIs do you see in HubSpot? What do you like it for? Uh, HubSpot is just for um, for um, for my good leads. Yeah, it's like my CRM. I just yeah. use this. CRM and sales part of HubSpot, so no landing pages and email marketing stuff. So what I see in, or what I track in HubSpot is just the, the number of leads mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, the deal, yeah. The, 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 the opportunity. The, yeah, deal. the opportunities. Yeah. It's my CRM software. Yeah. So the, if, if we talk about KPIs, it's just the number, the number of leads, and for yeah. sure. The status of of this uh, opportunity. That's what I, everything. I, what I like about HubSpot, it remembers yeah. what the first channel was people yeah. came through. Yeah. Because exactly like, one of the hardest. But questions, I didn't track it. I don't track it back. I just see it and then I'm happy or I'm not. Yeah. I, but if I see it's PPC or Google AdWords, yeah. I think I should do something like note it anywhere. Yeah. But I just I'm just happy because I know I just paid one, <laughs> one euro eighty for this. So if you <laughs> if you're serious about doubling yeah. your revenue, yeah. you you should become more serious about tracking that because you can yeah. just learn totally. and push so much fucking faster than mm -hmm. as if you as if you wouldn't. So I you're either using you know, like your, your your custom solutions or, or an all in one solution. It it does not matter. Or just use a fucking spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Just do it, give yourself the chance to, to have clarity, yeah? Uh, there's this saying about searching a black cat in a dark box, yeah? Mm -hmm. Religion is like believing that there is a black mm -hmm. cat, yeah, but you don't know. And science is like turning the fucking flashlight on yeah. to search for the black cat. 
And analytics is this flashlight for me, just for business. Yeah. One more question to, to one special KPI is something like this um, engagement rate of a social media post or something. Yeah. Maybe it fits to the former episode like uh, increasing followers. Do you measure or track something like this or is it just your gut feeling to see how it works or, or it doesn't? I do. I do measure it. But let me explain how. I um, have like a number of five organic posts mm -hmm. per week. It, let's talk about Facebook page, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, at, at the next, in the next week, I, I look back and see how much engagement I got. And I, in that list in the Facebook page uh, insights, I can see is this above average or below average. Organic. Organic reach. Yeah. Yeah? And the ones with the best organic reach that also are potential candidates for ads, mm -hmm. they get the money. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and they now get an initial budget to see if they convert cash flow positive. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. So I, I, I always look at the number of reactions, the number of comments and the number of shares and the ratio between those three mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. um, to evaluate if this, goes, uh, if this was a good post or not. If it was a good post, I tell my team, this was the best post of the week, this mm -hmm. was the worst post of the mm -hmm. week and we do that. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, you just have to keep on doing what people engage more with. I mean, mm -hmm. like even not, not doing all the clickbaity shit, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quality mm -hmm. value stuff. Mm -hmm. What about harder KPIs? If we, if we think about this kind of pirate metrics funnel or R metrics funnel, do we have to explain it? The R metrics? The R metrics? Yeah, they are like uh, R, A, A, R, R, R. Acquisition, activation, retention, referral, revenue, coined by Dave McLaur in like 2007-ish mm -hmm. on a beautiful slide deck. So if we think about not the acquisition part, because most <coughs> of the time it's easy to measure in analytics, for instance. Yeah. If we think about this activation phase, so the second phase, yeah. so the people came in, they, they downloaded uh, uh, my, 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 my PDF and gave me their email address. Yeah. So next part is... How can I activate them to use something or to ask a question or to answer a question? Yeah. Or if I, if I have an app and they downloaded the app, how could I make them starting this app, right? Yeah, absolutely. So how to measure if it is an app? If it is an app. So um, iOS app. <clears throat> an iOS app, you, again, in, instead of installing the, the Google or the Facebook Pixel, you mm -hmm. install what's called the Facebook SDK, the Google mm -hmm. SDK. Mm -hmm. And again, you have to define then manually the event. What is the, yeah? what is the trigger yeah. event? And what you want to register for activation and stuff like sign up, mm -hmm. log in, and then use of features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always trigger when somebody, for example, um, if it's a Q&A app, if they ask the first question, if they gave the first answer. Yeah, and the percentage of people who make it from sign up to first valuable engagement. Mm -hmm. That is the activation rate I usually define. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how many, 100 people sign up, 30 people ask a question. Yeah. That is the 30% activation rate. That is my current benchmark, which I might want to improve to 40%. Yeah, what I, what I want to, 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 to bring out again is this difference between user tracking and something what analytics does because mm -hmm. I'm facing a lot of projects where I say, okay, we are tracking this activation rate. And if, as you can see here yesterday, there were 100 logins and, uh, oh, 100 people and, three, uh, and 30 logged in. Where I say, yep. okay, but it's not user-based. You, 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 can, you can't do any user messaging or something like this because you don't know which of the users were from the segment of 30 mm -hmm. and which were, were the others. Actually, you, you can. You just yeah. have uh, with analytics? to do it. Yes. With Facebook analytics, super easy. With, with Facebook panel, analytics. super easy. But not Google analytics. Yes, that too. Yeah? Yeah, because uh, if you have a registration step, you can, with consent of the user, yeah, mm -hmm. um, you can use user ID-based ID tracking. And mm -hmm. then you are cross-device. It doesn't matter. You're like desktop, uh, mobile, third mobile device, mm -hmm. user ID, and whenever they In Germany? So would you recommend to do this in Germany or is it the second step to jail? 
<laughs> uh, I think if you um, make it part of your terms of services, uh, this is not retargeting, yeah. right? So yeah. this is not putting them it's into just... an advertising thing. It is just uh, saying this session belongs to this user. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as long as it's an anonymized ID, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it is reasonable um, that a lawyer in Germany would tell you, yes, that is okay if you do it with an anonymized ID. But please check for your individual yeah, sure. situation. That's but it is very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as long as you do it anonymized, but then again, it's, mm -hmm. it, you don't need to know the name of the person to send him on his matching customer journey. Yeah. It, the name does not matter. He could be called user one to three. Yeah. As long as you know he is stuck in this stage and now you need to help him with the next step. Okay, but in best case, as a gross hacker and uh, responsible yeah. for one customer journey, it would be perfect to see, okay, these are the 30 people yeah. who didn't uh, lock, Sign up. lock, it, it lock in yesterday, possible. lock in yesterday, yeah. and they get an email where yes. they say, okay, what was the reason? Yeah. Uh, here's a login again, just to send a reminder, a reminder or something. It can be beautifully done with HubSpot, with yeah. Intercom, yeah. with everything. Yeah. 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 Um, but not with Google Analytics. That was... It is possible with Google yeah. Analytics. Yeah, okay. uh, not, not, no, it absolutely is. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Okay. It, Google Analytics is very much like Excel. Like you mm -hmm. can use it and you can really use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you at least when you get it to user ID level, no mm -hmm. problem anymore. Yeah. All right, that is enough for today. Nerd, yeah. nerd stuff, nerd alarm nerd today. Stuff. Yeah, if you love that, come join me in Cologne at Startplus. Yeah. We are sitting here. Uh, Hendrik, are you going to be there? Is November seventh? Yeah. I've if if not, you're in the live stream. Most I will of be the in time. the. In li I think I'm in Hamburg on this. Is it Wednesday? It's the Wednesday. Ah, then or in I'm in Mailand. I have to do oh. a keynote presentation in Mailand. That's nice. That's a good excuse. Yeah. Until then, guys, go to growthartic.com. This is where you can find all of our links to our channels like YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes. Really and good. if you like this episode, please tell other people about it. Uh, give us a review and write us some comments. Thank you very yeah. much, guys. Bye-bye. See you later.